So as you know, you know, kids are playing video games these days, mm -hmm. and we've been reminiscing. We played hand tennis earlier. We've got a couple of other games as well. And I know that back in the day, there were some other things that we used to do, and I feel like the best person who can cross from video games into those old school games is Grant Hines. Grant, welcome to the show, my brother. Thank you so much for having me, guys. I hope, you, I hope, you're doing, I hope you guys are doing pretty well today. Look at your you're setup. Well. Look, you're you flexing. are next level. But you are literally what? taking us down I, many I, I, I lanes. Need, I didn't need to flex. What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> flex again, flex oh. again. Do it again, do it again. <laughs> do another one. Da -da. Yes. Da -da. Another angle. You got this. Another one. One more. <laughs> another one. One more angle. Uh, another, another angle is, uh, is this one. So just now I'm going to be showing you the game oh here. Oh, my goodness. Wow. This is going to be where we see the game. Oh, wow. You know? Next level. <laughs> sure, that is but let's, great. Let's talk about let's talk about some nineties nostalgia. What do you what you do you guys are, think? You are uh, taking us. Yeah. You are hitting us in the fields this morning, taking us down memory lane. The first one is Tazos. Tazos. Sure. Oh. I, I remember okay, Tazos. So collecting wise, it was great. Tazos came with this chip packet. So for those of you, I also kind of have to explain this for like kids that are watching this and they're like, "What is a Tazos?" <laughs> they were little plastic discs that you would pile up on one another and then you would throw another Tazo down. And then if you could knock the Tazos off the tower, you'd collect them. So you could either be like Adam stuff and then actually like <laughs> take them home and collect them away from your friends or you do it for fun because some of them were rare and collectibles. And most of them, it, it, fun fact, by the way, the Tazos that we got in South Africa were mostly Pokemon, but worldwide there were wrestling Tazos, there were a whole bunch of different Tazos. But here, it was all about Pokemon. We were Pokemon for Skrik, it was on SABC. We'd go home and we would watch Pokemon. When we went to school, we wanted to play Pokemon Tazos. Yeah. And they always came in chip packets. So at, the, at lunchtime, break time at the tuck shop, everybody was there. Everybody was getting the chip packets. Yes, it was the, it was the best time. Eh? My brother had like so many of them and I was so jealous. And people, uh, yeah, and he, just, and he definitely, definitely stole from me. Yeah, I'm people, pretty sure they had good ones and he stole from me. People would fight over that. I remember, like, break lunchtime, yes. people would fight over Tezos. Yo, it was a thing. And I mean, also, Pokemon is a thing. I remember, like, Pikachu! I just thought, like, yeah, I, I had to, yeah, I was a big fan. <laughs> definitely. Another thing, you know, other than, than Tezos, which like, caused such a craze, another, was my, my older thing. bro used to collect yo yo's back in the day mm. as well. Yes, did you, did you, did you, were you any good at yo-yos? Dude, like my older brother was that guy who would like walk into a room and say, hey, check here. <laughs> what do you think? And I was like, what? I'm, I was just about mastering the art of actually bringing it up and down. That guy was doing that little pyramid thingy and then it was moving through, it was crazy. But I think that was the big flex. I know Taz's the collecting was the flex, but yo-yos were the tricks. Next level. Yeah, yeah. So it was the, the tricks that we had those like translucent red ones and orange ones, and then you like you'd have a couple so that you could like do like you know the the, the walk the dog, and then you yes. could uh, do the Eiffel Tower, and you like it was the, the ticking clock in between. Yeah. Um, but I, I wasn't any good at them. I just wanted to like I, I could learn how to walk the dog yeah, with them. It was really good. But they, but like kids are probably watching this going yo yo. But like I'm telling you, every body had one of these yo-yos. Every single body in class had one of these yo-yos. At break time, it must have been a nightmare to be a teacher. See all these like hard pieces of plastic fly on <laughs> strings at each other. And yes, Speaking think, of hard pieces of yeah? uh, plastic, did you guys ever use spinning tops? Oh, yes. We used to call it tall. Cupping tall. Cupping a tall. <laughs> <laughs> what? Cupping what? a tall. A tall, I don't know. Cupping I don't know where the name came from. But yeah, when you said spinning tops, I was like, what is that? It was cupping a tall. Yes, and there was a certain amount of aggression that came with actually throwing these things that I think I'd never ever properly mastered. But some of these it's guys would actually get a spark it's off style. the top. Yeah. It's style, that's what you're thinking of. That's, not aggression. That, oh, that's so, you're right. It's not, it's, it was really cool. And I think what I loved about it is that I think it was just like a big sort of, you know, game as to how long you can get this thing to spin for. And then the better the throw, the more the spin. It was awesome. Yes. And Grant, okay, you also so had to, you had to shout Spaker. So whenever you took a top <laughs> and you, go, uh, you landed on someone else's top, you had to go Spaker. <laughs> it was just, you just started screaming Spaker. Oh know, my gosh. Like, isn't that impressive in and of itself to throw a spinning top on top of another spinning yeah. top? Are we, like, and then you want to say something? It doesn't make any sense. Do you guys remember Lion King marbles? Oh, my oh, word, wow. of course. Yes, of course. Of course we did. I mean, when watching that, that was like one of my first movies I ever watched in a cinema, and then the marbles came out and I freaked out.
They were sold at service stations and uh, you got them in lucky packets. You, all of these toys, by the way, most of them came in lucky packets. You didn't know what was inside. And it was all about <laughs> getting the rare collectible one. So like our parents must have been bankrupt. This is why boomers are, you know, like the next generation just doesn't have any money because of all these collectible toys. Um, so these like liking marbles obviously had like Mufasa and Rafiki and... Um, uh, Simba, and you always wanted to get Simba and Nala, because I remember Nala was like super, super rare. And then if you could get the, remember they're all like white pearl balls, and yeah. then there was like that one orange, like 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 gold ball or whatever. Uh, there we go, there. You see there's Rafiki in that gold ball in the top left. That's, what, what, I don't know who that, and then Nala in the middle. Like, I'd, if you had one of those, you'd be like the, you know, the, everybody in class would be trying to like get into your bag and, and, and jet that. That's, that's what happened. Grant, um, we used to call that one a gutty. A gutty. <laughs> so the, the big one was called a gutty. <laughs> no, it's not a big... No, oh, yes, 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 the big goal. marbles. If you talk about marbles, marbles, but it's very specifically liking marbles all yeah. came in the same size. But yes, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. And then lastly, did you guys play Foursquare? Foursquare? Oh, well, I mean, uh, back in the day, I actually didn't even play... No, I didn't play Foursquare. No, I didn't play Foursquare as well. So Foursquare, you take, a, you take a brick or you take a piece of chalk and you draw like two lines in the ground and then you would basically draw four squares and then you'd play hat, like this hat ball in between those two four squares. These people I think are playing it wrong in my <laughs> mind. I think you had to, we had the rules in South Africa where you had to bounce the ball into your square first before it got through to the next square. And uh, oh. then you'd move up and there would be, it would be Jack, I don't know, I forgot what the first was, like ace, jack, I remember. Uh, queen, king, and you wanted to be king. And then when you were sitting at king, you'd like hold that, you just move up and then you hold that position. And then when you lost, you got knocked back down to the, to the bottom again and you had to work your way up. And then the more rounds that you were in king, the longer, the higher your score. That was, that was how you played. It I was actually like, do remember I, that I, game. I just, I mean, thanks a lot, Grant. The memory lane thing, and we could be talking for hours about all these amazing games that I really wish there was around this time. But of course, we have to just you know, go to you on social media. If you want to add a game to the mix, we'd love to actually add it to our little social media a little later. So what type of game was your favorite to play as a child? Let us know.